Hi, I'm Wayne Jones. Welcome to Writing and Editing. This is episode 81, God, Love, Sex, and Atheism. My guest on this episode is Miracle Sims. She's a busy and creative person, but our discussion focused on religion generally and on her podcast called God, Sex, and Love. Miracle has published several books, including her own very open memoir about life as a single person and a Christian called The Cultivation Period, A Single Christian Journey. She has an associate's degree in theater from Gordon College, and in addition to being a writer, she's also an actor, singer, and songwriter. She was a real genuine pleasure to talk to, smart, funny, open, and we proved that a Christian and an atheist can in fact have a civilized conversation. Hi, Miracle. Uh, welcome to the show, and uh, thanks for taking the time to do this. I'm, I'm super appreciative, really. No problem, Mr. Wayne. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, no, good, good, good to see. Uh, you're a busy and productive person, so I've been poking around and seeing what information I could find out about you. Uh, that's why your ears were burning, by the way. There was someone looking into your data. <laughs> you, you, you published books. You, you host a podcast, which is sort of what got me to want you on the show called mm -hmm. "God, Sex, and Love." Yes. And you've already, and you've already posted an episode today, or one just came out today, anyway. Uh, so I thought I reminded me of the military, you know, we get more done before 6 a.m. than everyone gets done during the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you've got an entertainment company and there's much, much more. You, I even looked through your um, online through your book about it was I think it was a 30 day book about Bible reading or something like that. Uh, yes, like a, like, a like, yeah, you know, like a diary or a journal. Right. So. Uh, so you do a lot. How, how do you how do you get time for it? Uh, you're also a mother. Uh, you're a, a wife as well, I think. Uh, how do you are you super organized or are you just organically see how it goes? How does it work? Um, well, on one hand, I do kind of go with the flow a little bit. I mean, there is a little bit of rhyme or reason to, uh, for example, the daily inspiration uh, segment that you mentioned. Uh, that is a daily thing. And so I do it Monday through Saturday. And so. For that, I wake up at four to do it. So that is like one of those things that is now a part of my life and schedule. But for the most part, I mean, you know, I, I would say I'm a creative, I'm an artist at heart. So, you know, uh, there's an organized mess happening, you know, <laughs> in a lot of different ways. But yeah, there's some things that I've just been very, um, I don't know if you would say strategic about, but I just wanted to be more intentional about. And so that's that's how uh, the whole daily inspiration segment started. And honestly, the launch of uh, what you know as the Guy Sex and Love podcast and, and everything else that I've been doing lately as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. There has to be something strategic in there because uh, I don't know, you know, if you have, if I, I, well, maybe I'm just talking my own bias, but if I had, I'm a, I'm a super organized person. So that's how I do it. But for if, if one is not, there has to be some element of organization. Otherwise, at some point, uh, you'll be late for this or the kids weren't fed or something will happen. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It definitely has to be some type of organization when it comes to, like like you just said, with family life as well as uh, work life and, and creatives and everything like that. So, yeah, like I said, on one hand, it's a creative thing and I'm just kind of like, you know, just want to live my passions and go for my dreams and go for my goals and that type of thing. But on the flip side, there is some type of, I mean, well, I don't know. I have my backgrounds in theater. So, you know, mm. with that whole concept, it's like if you're if you're early, you're on time. And when you're on time, you're late. So, I mean, that could, that <laughs> right. could uh, involve it in the way I do things as well. So I wish more people had that philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> I've listened to, I've not listened to, I, I, I didn't get a chance to listen to um, uh, uh, like, a, like a ton of episodes of your podcast, but one of, I, but I listened to the one today, for example, the, to, at least in my dating, it's today, it came out on the, the 28th, and is it, is this a fair description of it? One of the basic methods is to pick a story from the Bible that involves a woman, and then discuss the relevant relevancy and the issues that come out of that with a guest that you might have on. Is that, 
Does that apply to all of them or just the, the one that I happen to listen to today? No. So basically what's happening, um, so there's a lot of different segments that I do with God, Sex, and Love, but the most consistent things I would say are the, the daily inspiration segment, but that's what I call the juice. Um, so basically, basically what's going on with that is that um, every morning that I wake up at four, I take some time to listen to this prayer meditation and then I'll, uh, you know, be praying and then I'll, whatever God leads me to, to look up in regards to the Bible and, and what like random topic or subject or something like that. I'll start looking up Bible verses centered around it. And then after my study at, you know, I try to have something recorded by 6 a.m. To, to hopefully encourage and inspire people. So that's pretty much, I've challenged myself to start doing that back uh, August, excuse me, April the 1st, 2020. And ever since then, that's when, you know, I started this process of uh, daily inspiration. I mean, there was a lot of things that kind of led me to start doing it. Um, one of the things was, for the longest time over the years, I always would say to myself, I need to Bible study more. I need to pray more different things like that. And so eventually, I mean, you know, when the pandemic hit, you know, we're all at home and <laughs> there's nothing else to do really. Um, and I just kind of, I guess, felt a little bit of conviction to, to start doing those things that have been on my heart and mind to do. And so God, sex and love was one of those things. And in my mind, it was always going to be a talk show. But um, I was trying to find alternative ways to at least just get the idea out there. And my husband told me back in 2019, he was like, you should make it a podcast. And I kind of brushed him off because I was thinking about making it a blog at that time. Um, but then again, in 2020, when the idea came back around for me to do a podcast and then, you know, I had all this time and availability, um, I was like, well, what would I do on this podcast? What would I talk about? And so the inspiration came up about daily inspiration. Again, possibly inspired by my husband because I was thinking about just doing, oh, maybe I'll do like one podcast a week or one, you know, podcast a month. Mm -hmm. He's the one that was all like, oh, well, really the successful people do it every day. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what would I even talk about every day? And so after thinking about that and brainstorming that idea of like, what would I talk about every day? The, the daily inspiration aspect uh, came into my heart and mind. And so that's yeah, pretty the much what I do every day. And that's then, yeah, every week I have a talk show. <laughs> I that's 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 super awesome that's a very um, there's definitely a good strain of organization in you I agree I agree with your husband in the sense that uh um uh I think once a month I mean basically there's not enough momentum there to gather an audience or to whatever uh daily is good I do about uh, maybe two or three times a week kind of thing and I find that that's uh that's a pretty good I'm I'm trying to up that maybe a little bit I have lots of time. I'm retired now, so uh, it's, it's not for lack of time. It's just that I don't want to. I don't want to move to daily quite yet. Uh, I feel that I. What I want to do is yours is different in the sense that, well, in a lot of ways. But one of the ways is if it's an inspiration, it's a, obviously a daily inspiration. I feel that I want to put it in an episode, give people a few days to either think about it or download it or whatever, and then move to the next one. So that's why I basically do two or three a week. So, and it's working out, although I'm in the, uh, in the process of changing it a bit now. I want to ask you about, um, I'm not a Christian, for example, you're, you're a Christian. I, I used to be a Christian. So I was once, um, uh, uh, I was once what they call say i'm doing air quotes now on the radio but i was once what they call saved in the pentecostal church this is back when i was 15 so what that basically means for people who aren't pentecostals is that uh you know you're having a service and the uh, preacher is, is saying something and at least the one i went to which was in a small town called cox's cove in newfoundland canada which was where my mother was born uh people come to the front and they basically then that's what they call declaring Christ Jesus as your personal savior. And I did that. I fully believed it. Now, when I look back at it, I can see that I was just a very, because I'm not a Christian anymore. I, I, I was, I was a teenager who was needed something and I thought this was it and it didn't last very long. It lasted about a year. And uh, now I'm what the Pentecostals call a backslider. So, <laughs> and I guess I'll never lose that but as soon as, <laughs> even though, yeah, but that's a fast line. If that's the worst thing that happens to me, I, I'm okay about that. Uh, uh, but basically what happened after that, uh, after I became 16 and then into my twenties, I'm now in my early sixties. So I've been, and just that my atheism has grown 
more entrenched. You know, I, I can't imagine any other kind of way of thinking. And I guess I what, what that's a long in, uh, intro, but what I wanted to ask you is, what is it that makes you confident in your faith? And and like, um, I mean, I, and correct me if you think of it differently, but I think of faith as something that's not proven. I mean, it's not proven like, uh, you know, various scientific things, but you're confident in it. What is it? Because I don't have that confidence. Uh, I've, I, in fact, rejected it. What is it that makes you confident in it? Well, I mean, I, mainly it's what he's done in my life, like what I've seen happen in my own life in regards to, I mean, it can be as small as, like I was sharing with this whole daily inspiration thing. I know, for example, people feel like, oh, I can't make a change in my life or no, I, however I am, that's how I have to stay or whatever the case is. Um, well, just my daily inspiration is proof enough that, hey, God changed my life. Like I went from years of being like, oh, I should go and do this thing. And uh, when am I going to do? Uh, it's on my mind to do it. I'll do it one day procrastinating to going to a place where not only did I, that I changed my own life in regards to now I'm somebody that wakes up at four to give daily inspiration and all of that. But, you know, beyond that, it's just the people that I've met along the way by doing this. And, you know, uh, the people that I'm now working with that I call like my international dream team, like people from around the world, I've never seen them face to face, never met in person, but it's like we're this tight knit group or family that's kind of helping me to get this thing out here and stuff. So um, that's one example. But then also I would say my, uh, you know, me and my husband was something that was confirmation for me in a lot of ways. Cause again, I mean, I wrote a whole book about being single and stuff. So, I mean, that's a whole nother conversation by itself, but I share those different types of things. Um, Cause again, it can be as something as small as, you know, me doing something for myself that individually just spreads out to, to the world or, you know, again, what he did with me and my whole single journey as well as marriage and, or just, I mean, you know, even me being here, Honestly, even me being here, you know, because um, my my father was conceived out of wedlock. So obviously, especially these days, we know there's a lot of options that women, you know, take and whatnot. So knowing him and then the fact that that's how he was conceived. And then me, um, my parents was only married for maybe like a year or so before he passed. And he passed the same year I was born. So he passed in May and I was born in August of that year. And so I can't help but think about like, man, what if, <laughs> you know, they didn't have sex when they did, you know, what if right. they didn't get married when they did? Like, and then what if my grandmother was embarrassed that, to get pregnant, um, you know, outside of her marriage and, you know, aborted him or something, you know what I mean? Like, there's just so many different things and factors that, you know, for me to even be here or, and to be, maybe even have this conversation with you and all these different things where, I mean, that, that's where my faith, that, well, that confirms my faith. I mean, yeah. the faith is, you know, for me, it's part of life. But at the same time, you get those confirmations every now and then. And so those are things that confirm for me. Uh, yeah, it's interesting you should put it that way. Because because for me, I would, uh, like, I guess I would just see it. I mean, uh, I, I don't mean to inflict this on your own life, but like, what is it that you make, makes you think that God has anything to do with it? Like, for example, you'd mentioned earlier, I think before we were recording that, you know, your husband said, oh, do it weekly. And you now you're getting up at four. Like, that's your husband. And uh, uh, the fact that you were born just had to do with accidents of, you know, your whatever it happened. Like, how, why is it that you bring it back to God? Like, why is it that you uh, don't just see it as something that happened on the earth? for whatever reason of accident or planning or luck or whatever it might be. Why is it do you think God got you into it? That is what I'm asking. Well, okay, so the interesting thing is, it's like, okay, we can ask that question and, and take it all the way back, right? We're like, well, how did this happen? And then, okay, well, then how did this happen? And then how did that happen? And then we go all the way to either it was all accident and that there was no purpose, no plan. Even when, I mean, you even just mentioned the word plan, for example, like, well, who is, who planned it? Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I believe that uh, everything around us shows that there is a creator involved uh, in everything. Um, everything was created. And so, um, yeah, so for me, I mean, we can, if we go, if we really truly think about it and go all the way back to, well, how did this and how was this and how was this, you're going to get to a point where it's like, and then what made that, you know, and either, and I, I don't, 
for it to all just be an accident and just all coincidence and stuff like that. I mean, I don't think that's a, I think it takes more faith to believe that than to believe that there was a God that created it all. I guess that I, it, it's curious that you should mention it that way. Cause that's where I go. I go, like, I, I don't believe I get back to where eventually this was created at some point or happened at some point. Uh, but my answer is, I don't know the reason and I cannot given the head that I, the, the head that I have on my shoulders that works most of the time, I cannot attribute it to God. I can't attribute it to any, uh, what I would call anything supernatural like that. So I can't explain it, but mm -hmm. I, I can also, I cannot also bring myself, you know, just like I'm looking at this computer now, I can't convince myself that this, that it's a, a Mac because I know it's a PC that's that it's at that level i i just can't i just can't go there so uh, th that that's that's what's the interesting thing for me the leap to the leap to faith like that the leap to say well and you took it right back to the universe uh the beginning of the universe when i get there i say yeah i i see i see the point but i just i just i can't explain it so i i, I i'm ignorant but I, I i can't give it over to god because i don't I don't believe that that in that entity. Yeah. And I mean, I guess that's the interesting thing, at least about Christianity. I mean, I can't speak for every religion and whatnot, but I would say it, when it comes to Christianity, um, I think that's the interesting, interesting thing that God gave us the free will to have that choice. Right. Um, in, in my opinion. Right. Um, and according to the Bible. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, in the Bible, it said he, he gave us the free will to make that choice and to, to decide whether we believe that or not. Um, on one hand, yeah, we can go back and say, well, you know, there's there's no way to explain it. I can't explain it. But then on the other hand, the Bible explains it all. <laughs> you know, it says from the beginning what happened and in X, Y, and Z. Now, whether we believe that or not, that, that's the choice that we have. Um, but, you know, so, I mean, I don't know. I just find that to be, you know, the interesting thing. And again, it's, it's everybody's unique journey. It's everybody's life and this, you know, life decision and everything. So, um, some people think that's a big deal, and according to the Bible, it is. But if you don't believe that's a big deal, then I mean, I guess it doesn't really, you know, matter, you know. But I think it does because I, you know, with the Bible study thing, I, I think that it matters. But I understand that some people may not think that that matters, and so, um, yeah, I mean, I guess that would be the question at the end of the day. It's like, I mean, you know, if it, you know, why, why? I say why ask the question. I mean, I think there's, I think there's something to asking a question i think there's something into uh you know seeking truth and all and all those different things and i, I feel like those that seek they find um if, if they're open to find it and 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 then not even just that but then uh if you're open to receiving what you what you find you know yeah. um yeah and i guess where i am I've, i'm the same thing i'm actually very interested in religion and all that although i'm an atheist uh and i've definitely sought and thought about it a lot uh i i guess i believe and this may sound like i i'm a I, i'm a depressed person i'm actually super happy and content all the time and but but i i believe that it's all pointless you know that it all has no purpose and i i, I don't know how it was created and i also believe that when i die it's all over with, you know, it's all done. And uh, I believe that for everyone else as well. Uh, and I've read a lot, I've read most of the Bible, most of the Christian Bible. And that's, that's another thing that, uh, like, for example, I, I, I guess I believe too, that it's a, it's a faith choice to think that the Bible is, is the word of God. I mean, that's, you know, people have said that over the years, but who, you know, there's nothing really to, to prove that it was written by men, I guess, uh, inspired by God, uh, the, the Christians say, but there's a lot of very bad things in the Bible, you know, there's, especially the Old Testament, uh, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of cases where God manipulates people and where God is angry and God is insecure and stuff like that. It, it just doesn't seem to me to be like, it seemed to me to be like a, like a person would be but not what an omniscient, omnipotent God would be. Do, do you see what I'm getting at or, or does it make any sense? Uh, I mean, I, I didn't 
understand what you're saying. It's funny because I, I feel like my husband and I, we've had some conversations regarding, you know, because, for example, what was it that he said? It, he was saying that he didn't think God would get upset or something like that. Mm. Um, well, and again, if I'm, if I'm sticking to the Bible, right, and everything, um, it says that we're made in his image. And so if we get upset, then why wouldn't he get upset? Like, if we're <laughs> reflections of him, you know? Um yeah, I, I I agree. There are, you know, moments where he's, you know, uh, angry or, you know, it does say that he's a jealous God and all these other things. I mean, now, now if that's bad or not, I don't know if I could say that. Um, but, you know, um, I can acknowledge that there's things in there that maybe we don't fully understand and um, and everything. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting to think about. And I mean, I think, again, I mean, if we, well, from what I, again, what I see that it says is that we need to to study for ourselves, right? We need to, you know, not just go by what I say. Anybody, you know, pastor, anybody, we still need to do it for ourselves. And I know I'm not just trying to plug out my products, <laughs> but I mean that's one reason um, why I, you know, started the daily inspiration because again, I, it was for me to study the Bible for myself. But then also, you know. Uh, when I did make the Bible study journal, it was something to challenge other people to do that for themselves as well. At least challenge yourself to do it for 30 days. And then whether you keep going like I did or, or not, you know, that's up to you or whatnot. Um, but um, I think, yeah, we should at least all do that. And and because we're all on our own journeys and, and everything. And again, it's up to you whether you believe or not, you know, because we do have that free will. I've asked the question, like, why did you give us so much free will? Like, we see what people do with their free will. Like, why did you even give us that? But I mean, you know, but I guess the other thing when it came to that was like, you know, if God was the type of God to be like, I'm going to force you to love me, then is that truly love? I mean, in any other scenario, it wouldn't be. Like, if I force my husband to love me, you know, with a gun or whatever, you know, then that does he truly love me or is he loving me? you know, just out of fear, whatever case is. So, you know, we all have that choice and, and we can make that decision um, and everything like that. Um, and if, hey, and again, I guess we'll find out at the end, the end you know, who, who's right. But I just feel like, um, I don't know if it's something that my mom said, um, but I think I think so. Like, um, I guess at the end of the day, that's a, like a 50-50 chance. And, you know, and if, if, for example, if you're right, then I guess, you know, nothing lost, nothing gained, right? But if I'm lost, right, then, it, unfortunately it's like you would have lost <laughs> everything yeah, you know right. um, so i don't know you know what i mean like you know everybody uh, can decide but <laughs> yeah no that's true yeah what do you think happens uh well maybe i can ask it two ways mm -hmm. what do you think happens to you when you die and what do you think happens to me when i die because it's, it's very likely i'm going to change my views i think so what what happens to you when you die he said, well, I'm, not trying, I'm not trying to change your views, man. I, here's my thing, man. I always I say this all the time on the podcast. Like, hey, man, believe what you want to believe, X, Y, and Z. Uh, it's, you know. Um, but according to the Bible, you know, what would happen is, you know, either. So, I mean, I, I, it'll be easy to just go to the whole, okay, you're going to lift your, one's going to be with Christ and then the other's not, not going to be, basically, which we know the alternative and and whatnot i think everybody <laughs> that's even heard anything about christian faith they know that the alternative if you're not in heaven you're in hell you know mm -hmm. um so that i mean that's what is biblical i mean i know that there's this whole other period and whatnot that people talk about when it comes like to the judgment period and all this type of stuff um you know so maybe there's a you know people say that there's like the paradise aspect of like being at risk until that when jesus come back and everything like that um so I can't say that I've studied it fully enough to be like, yes, that's what it says, O S Y Z. I've heard both scenarios. I've heard that, you know, when people die, they automatically go where they're going. Um, uh, yeah, so those are the two scenarios I've heard. Either, you know, there's a rest and then you get sent where you're going or you are automatically where you're going. My defense, if it comes to it, and I don't mean to be, uh, um, what do you call it, disrespectful, is that... Um, uh, you know, you hear this, the, the old story about people being at the gate and Peter is there to either let you in or not let you in. He has a book that he checks, apparently. At least this is what I've heard. You know, this is what the, some of the things I and that might be in the Bible somewhere. And I think I'd have a good, ex I think I'd be able to talk my way in because uh, I, I, 
he gave me the head that I have and the head that I have, uh, it just can't believe in him. If I can put it that way, it can't have faith. It doesn't have, it doesn't work that way. And so I could, I think I'd be able to, so that Peter would have to say, you know what, Wayne, come on in. Uh, you're, you're going in the back. You're not coming up in the front with the best of us, but come on in. You can go in the back. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I mean, well, I guess the, the thing, Mr. Wayne, do, do you want to go in? Uh, I would. Well, that's I, right. that's I, I, no, no, no. I would love to, but I just can't believe that. I just can't, it's like saying, uh, would I like to, you know, it's like saying, would I like to have a billion dollars? Yes, I would. But, uh, you know, I, I feel that uh, I don't buy lottery tickets or generally don't because I feel that the chances are way, way, way against it. I've heard someone once say that the chance of winning a lottery ticket is the same chance of being struck by lightning while you're being attacked by a shark. <laughs> so that's that's pretty <laughs> anyway it's just that uh, anyway it's mostly a joke that i sort of say that thing about yeah. that i think i could talk myself in there because but but i don't because i don't believe it i believe that once i die my con i find it a little weird that my consciousness which seems bigger than my body um uh will completely cease to function uh, but that's what I believe. I believe that. And I accept that. And I just believe that I have this slice of time and I'm trying to do what I can with it. That makes me happy. That makes my loved ones happy and stuff like that. That's what I'm trying to do. So, yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you something uh, just to switch, switch a little way from the big stuff to something because I because one thing I didn't get a chance to look at was your book that you referred to. You wrote mm -hmm. a book called uh, Being Single and Christian. I can't remember what it's called now. Yes, it's called The Cultivation Period, A Single the Christian Cult Journey. Yeah, great. What the uh, I'll admit that I know nothing about this, except it's about it's kind of a memoir about what it's like to be single and a Christian. Uh, is it super personal? Is it uh, more generic in general, or how is it? So the funny thing is, when it when <laughs> it started off kind of general, um, it started off on you know I'm supposed to come from a single woman's perspective, and a friend of mine she was going to write the married woman's perspective because we were kind of looking at each other's lives with envy, I guess you would say, um, during that time of my life in my twenties, basically. And um, as I started to write my part, uh, well, one she never wrote her part, so. <laughs> it is two. <laughs> two. Um, the more I was writing and the more time that went by between when I was writing and when I actually published, I realized that I was pretty much just telling my story. I was telling like what, you know, why I was where I was, why I was looking at the dating the way I was, um, why I was looking at being single the way I was. And then um, and just pretty much I, I started from the beginning to to try to figure that out and be like, you know well, why am I like this and, and everything like that? And so, yeah, it was a struggle for me being uh, both Christian and single <laughs> and, you know, and well, to be, and to completely honest, you know, you guys know I have the uh, podcast, God, Sex and Love. So, I mean, I, I, I'm I honest everywhere I go that I was single, Christian and horny, right? And I was trying to <laughs> ask <laughs> what to do, you know, because that's a struggle. I mean, well, because one, Bible readers and believers, they know that we're not supposed to be engaging in certain things. Uh, before the time of marriage and so I'm like well where's my husband at Lord like well, you know <laughs> I know how I feel right now and all of that and so <laughs> and so yeah I mean during this time in my life what I call the cultivation period which was pretty much my 20s you know uh, at some point I started you know again probably writing a book and just really thinking about like where I was because what I was doing around that time uh, I was fooling around you know I wasn't having sex but I was fooling around and doing pretty much everything but sex and <laughs> <laughs> and all of that. And I was like, okay, I know what I want. I want marriage. I want love. I want, you know, the husband and all of that. But I had to I basically look at myself in the mirror and be like, well, one, why are you doing the things you're doing if you if ultimately you want marriage? You know, two, you know, why are you this way? And so, um, unfortunately, I guess the sad part of the story is that I realized that that stemmed from being introduced to sexual things at an early age. Um, I'm, I'm thankful that my testimony isn't necessarily like rape or anything like that, but just because, for example, that I was 
the molested by a babysitter doesn't sorry, mean that sorry to hear that it didn't affect me and my life and my thoughts and stuff throughout my life and so you know I know that my story um isn't that uncommon that's the other sad part of the thing is like there's a lot, a lot of other people that experience things and so for me it was basically I was being kissed and touched and encouraged to touch and whatnot at that maybe like the young age that my son is like you know probably like three or four you know wow. um so again like it wasn't a traumatic experience for me it wasn't something that was like oh I'm scared you know it wasn't anything like that it was more so I went throughout life with just being you know for example you know I, I dealt with masturbating from that young age on um you know just always being kind of frisky or always you know and then eventually after that you know obviously other things happen you know whatever but so yeah so dealing with that right and when I get to my 20s right and I'm trying to date and I'm trying to like you know figure out what I what it is that I really want and all these different things um I yeah by looking in the mirror and being like why are you like this <laughs> you know why are you always so ready to go and frisky and all this stuff why are you like this and then I had to think back on those on the, on that time of my life and I just was like okay now that I have that understanding that some of that came from being introduced to those things at that young age now what am I going to do you know you know and everything like that and so honestly God used and I know you're going to be like well <laughs> yeah, I believe that God used this these words God sex love and honestly um career was what like back in the day if people look me up actress miracle sims if y'all look at my youtube y'all see like all these little random videos i used to do and so if you find this little playlist of me with a little fro um <laughs> uh, talking about being a single christian woman and whatnot basically yeah I, I told the people in one of the first videos i did i'm like this is what i think about i think about god sex and my career and if I'm not thinking about those three things, I'm just, you know, probably doing something specific. But these are the things I think about. And so that's the thing that was kind of like the beginning stages of what you guys now know is God, sex and love. Like that was the beginning stages. And um, there was a lot of things that like kind of, I guess, inspired me to, to just get in front of the camera and talk. Um, and one of those things was looking for content. I was looking for to see if there was anybody else out there like me. Like, is anybody else like, and what do we do? Does anybody say, like, I know what we're not supposed to do. I get it. I get what we're not supposed to do, but what do we do? And and I really wasn't finding it. Like, you know, people would have the conversation, like, and Christians would have the conversation, but they would only go so far. And I just was like, I can't relate to that. You know what I mean? Like, anybody else out here? Anybody? Um, so... <laughs> So yeah, I saw that to say that basically, yeah, that was the beginning stages of God, Sex, and Love. And honestly, um, the book itself is kind of talking about basically my life up until a certain point, up until my twenties, praying for marriage, praying for my husband, you know, not seeing him nowhere around me, but was like he's out there somewhere. <laughs> and um, and and then yeah, the things I learned along the way um, to I guess prepare for this time in my life. And so, and the crazy thing is that I did publish this last year. Um, I turned 35 last year. Um, so like I said, wrote it in my twenties, published it in my, you know, when I'm in my thirties. Um, and the crazy thing is that all the things I was praying about and whatnot, I, I now have. And so, and I'm now living, you know? And so that's the thing I, I did have to put in like a little thing at the end, like, Hey, so just so you know, those, anybody that reads this book now, you know, all that stuff I was praying for, all that stuff, you know, I, I do have a loving, supportive husband. And I, you know, we have, a, I call him annoyingly adorable son. <laughs> and <laughs> And and now I'm just, you know, living this life at this point. And so, I mean, and are we perfect? No. Am I the perfect wife? Probably not. Is he perfect? You know, we're humans still, you know. But I do feel like he's perfect for me in regards to, you know, his support, his love, his unconditional everything. And so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just a little bit of my testimony. I know I just went all over the place. But they're all intertwined, which is the other crazy thing as well. But that's yeah. what <laughs> I that that's a good summary and actually it's uh I'm happy to hear that it's like that rather than because another thing I can imagine that's a book that a Christian woman or even a man in their 20s is writing is about uh is more like extreme like uh whatever you do a kiss on the cheek is about all that you that's uh, that's it otherwise you're going to go straight to <laughs> hell right <laughs> Because I can imagine it that, but I mean, in your twenties, I can remember my twenties as well. Uh, you know, 
<laughs> I want a little bit more than a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> you know what? And I say this all the time. I commend those people that, because I did hear about people that, you know, they don't even kiss until they're married. And I was like, what? People do that? <laughs> like, wow, that's a big dumb restraint. Like, I'm over here applauding for them because I'm like, I could barely hold on with what, what I was doing. Like, y'all on another level. That's, I mean, you know, praise God for y'all. Um, but then on the same time, you know, like you say, I mean, <laughs> you know, for those that do want a little bit more and whatnot, you're like, but see, here's the crazy thing, too. So during that time in my life, I was praying. I was like, Lord, you know, OK, I know what I'm not supposed to be doing. So take it away. Take it away. Take those feelings away. <laughs> and, you know, and then they wouldn't go away. And I'm like, well, Lord, you didn't take it away, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. But I, I come to learn that it's not necessarily sex isn't sin. Sex isn't the sin. The sin is doing it in the wrong time. And, and then not only just that, but I fully understand now as somebody that is married and looking at, I guess, you know, when you, when you want the other side, you can understand things a little bit better, <laughs> but um, yeah, I can, I can see now why we probably should restrain from sex until you're married. I mean, just because I know it might not be popular, but I mean, you know, when you see all the different uh, consequences or things that happen and it, I guess that's another expression of God, sex, and love. When you, for me, when you see God not incorporated into sex and in His way, and it's not done in the way that He created it to be done in, um, there's just so many different things and so many different factors that um, I don't think we consider until, unfortunately, we're in the midst of the situation. We see things from broken homes to, you know, child, uh, fatherless children, maybe even motherless children, depending. Or we see the abortion situation. We see, there's just so much that, you know. If you've done things that way that we probably could have avoided. Um, and then not not even to mention, like, when it comes to, and again, whether you believe it or not, I'm just saying, uh, <laughs> according to the Bible, there's these different things of, like, you know, when it comes to, like, the spiritual aspect of, like, soul ties and just being connected to people that, on that other level, where it's just, it's just so much more to sex than just the act. And so, um, you know, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as a as a as an atheist, I can say that uh, uh, yeah, it 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 can make uh, you closer to a person. But there are cases where, and I can attest in my twenties that not that I was uh, as I probably it sounds like I was doing even less than you were. So, uh, but it it um, it can be something that's just a physical act that's a that's a pleasurable thing, and I I could do it as an atheist uh, without. I don't, there's no such thing as sin for me. And there's no, there's no concept, you know, there's no consequences in the sense of uh, my spirit or my uh, fate when I die and things like that. So that, that's the uh, upside or sort of, if we can put it that way, because, you know, because when you don't have a book or, a, or a God that's uh, made rules about it, then uh, you make your own rules about what you think is comfortable uh, for you. So that's right was and am yeah i mean and i understand that i guess th there's so i guess that when it comes to that i mean the thing is it's like if, if there is for example no morality no values no no line then that kind of leave things very very open and um that's kind of i mean i think it's kind of maybe a scarier place to be you know just because for example, again, like you say, well, what's good for me, you know, may not be good for the other person or and stuff. And so when we talk, when I, I know people probably use these examples all the time, but it's like when you think about the bigger issues or bigger things where morals and values uh, seems to be like, I know it's so easy to use murder. So I hate to, <laughs> to use that one. I would probably, you know, I want to use a different one. But I mean, when you think about that, like, I think. For the most part, I mean, atheists or not, I mean, can we agree that we probably shouldn't kill other people? I agree. So, you know what I mean? And so if just murdering people, you know, but but with us leaving it open, with if let's just say God didn't doesn't have it, there's no morals, no values, whatever, then that leaves that open, right? And there's people that probably believe that, hey, I have every right to kill this person, you know? Um, that it, let's say an innocent person, let's not say the person that's coming to rob you or something like that, mm -hmm. or that you're protecting yourself. Let's not talk about that person in, in this moment. Let's talk about just a random person. Oh, I feel like I want to kill you. Cause there are people that they're serial killers and all these different people. Right. So there's people out there that believe 
because they, they have no morals, no values, none of those things, they're like, oh, what's there's nothing wrong with me killing this person. Now, they might feel regret, maybe at some point in their life, maybe when they're in jail, maybe, you know, or maybe not. Maybe they're going the rest of their, li their lives and never feel any wrong or remorse for doing that act. Yeah. Um, but not only did that affect that person, the person that died, but it's going to affect that person that dies, victims, families, anybody that's connected to that person. And so even if we do it to ourselves, even suicide and all these different things. And so, um, you know, I, you know, I understand, again, everybody can believe what they want to believe. But I, I just think when it comes to this conversation about morality and values and stuff, I think it's important to have that because if we don't, I mean, do we really want anything goes? Because that's, a, I mean... I don't know. It's scared I, I, me. Yeah, no, I, 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 I misspoke if I implied that. I, I don't. I have morality and I have uh, my ethics and values, but I don't believe that anything goes. I believe like, totally against uh, murder for one thing. Uh, we happen now, for example, to have the uh, the Pope, who's the head of the Catholic Church, visiting Canada, and uh, uh, you know, talk about sex, right? That's basically, in my view, an organization that condones its employees, priests, uh, having sex with little boys. I have I'm, I, adamantly, angrily opposed to what that church has done to not stop that. Uh, it's, 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 it's blasphemous, outrageous, evil. Uh, mm -hmm. So no, no, no. Uh, the, the fact that I uh, think that, you know, there, you know, the only rule I think in sex is consent. Uh, the person that you're having sex with needs to consent with it. Once that happens, uh, there are no, there's no, and the person has to be of age. Those are the two things. Uh, <laughs> apart from that, uh, you know, knock yourself out. Uh, and maybe that could be part of it. Maybe you have someone knock you, knock you out and who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my no, Again, I, I guess, to... I guess what I'm sorry to interrupt, but I guess what I'm saying is that the fact that I, uh, declare more or less sort of freedom about sex that doesn't that doesn't mean necessarily that I think everything is off for all other actions like I'm, I'm I feel that in that sector yes in the field of murder no 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 in the field of uh of uh basically just sexual abuse of boys no 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 so it, just the fact that i'm open in a certain area doesn't mean that i'm open in other areas i have my restrictions too i have my own values well i'm glad i'm glad to hear that yes i'm glad to hear that um Opposite of that is the sin, and so th that's more, more of where I was coming. And I know the whole murder. Like I said, I hate to use that example just because I just know that I think everybody knows, like deep within, everybody knows that you know you probably shouldn't murder people, right? But you know, it, but like I said, when we when we eliminate sin, right, we eliminate this idea that hey, you know, there are consequences to certain actions. Because that's the other thing as well. It's like, do we think that we can go through life and um, there be no consequences consequences to our actions, you know, um, I mean, and maybe on one hand, we, we might do think that, I, you know, I think we live that way. Um, you know, and I just say we as humans, just whether, no matter what you believe, I just think we as humans do live in a way where we don't think that there's consequences to our actions. But then what, when it comes to us, but then when it comes to other people, right, I do feel like people kind of look at it like, oh, well, you know, yeah, that person did something wrong. There should be some consequences to that. You know, again, if you murder my family member, I want you, I want justice for that or whatever the case is. But why, why is that? You know, why, why is, why do we seek justice if we don't believe that, um, you know, there's right or wrong? Like, I think that's where it kind of gets, uh, well, you know. Yeah. I believe there is right and wrong. And I seek justice because I, I'm a, I believe in a secular well-run society but i don't need to bring god into it to to uh make me want i'm a very very uh adamant about things like i like i just mentioned about the catholic church and other things as well other churches as well or pastors here and there uh you know and uh, homophobia that sort of thing um so i guess what i'm saying is that i don't I have, it's not that I believe that anything goes, I certainly do not. Uh, it's just that I manage it myself. 
and I don't need God to tell me what to do. I guess is what I'm saying. It's coming, it comes out a little categorical, but that's what I I'm saying. And I don't believe in him anyway or her. So uh, it, it's 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 it doesn't matter, you know, in a way. I manage my life the way I, I, I choose to. And I'm generally a good person. I've only killed maybe two or three people. That's about it. Tops. Oh, no. Oh, Lord. Lord. <laughs> I haven't no, killed no, anyone. Again, again, I guess I, I, I think I'm speaking more generally. So, for, again, I, I apologize. I feel like I'm coming for you. I'm not coming for you. No, <laughs> no, no. I, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I'm just saying the, the idea, you know what I mean? When it comes to this idea that, you know, there's no sin, there's no God, there's no nothing. I mean, then, then what is the, there's no line, you know? And, and, um, so I guess that for me, that's, that's why that's another proof that there is a God. Cause then, I mean, if there's, you know, I mean, yeah, the world's crazy right now, but I still think the world is still restrained, uh, you know, it, yeah. cause I don't think everything, if everything hasn't burned down yet and there's, I feel like there's a reason for that. Um, but that's me, you know, I think there's a purpose. I think we all have a purpose. I think, you know, each and every human was created to be beautifully, you know, unique, you know. Um, but again, uh, I know that there are people that may not believe that and, and that's okay, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I guess where we disagree is that I, I, I disagree with the fact that lacking a God means you accept that there's no line. I, I believe there are lines and I believe that that's what the law is about. We do it ourselves, you know, men and women establish laws. And if everyone followed the law, forget the Bible and the Quran and the rest of them. If you followed the law, uh, we would probably have a very well-run society uh, because the laws have been, a lot of work has gone into that. So anyway, anyway, it's been a super pleasure talking to you. It's nice. I think, uh, I think an atheist and a Christian have had a, a very civilized conversation here, and I'm happy to hear that. Happy to do that. Uh, I don't. I know you don't agree with a lot of what I said, and I don't agree with a, a lot of what you said. But it's been nice to meet you. You're not quite what I expected. I. I. Uh, uh, I and I. I'm, I was super happy to hear about the the book, and I'm mm -hmm. going to go back and listen to more episodes of uh, God, Sex, and Love because I only had a chance to listen to the one, and it sounds like it might have been a little out of. Uh, character with the rest of them so mm. thanks again yeah. for coming on no problem thank you thank you for having me and i mean yeah if you do want to check everything out check out the um you know we got the talk show every uh every friday at seven as well so there's uh, that's when i talk to other people so hey you want to come on there yeah i think well i don't know if you'll be the first atheist because i have talked to other people that might believe differently but <laughs> Uh, you, but we can at least make we can like title it that if you want. <laughs> if you love want to, to <laughs> love to Sam. Just to go to my contact info and I'd love to come on. Okay. Take care. <laughs> have a have a good rest of your day. Yes, you too. Bye. Bye. And that's all for this episode. Thanks for listening. If you want more info about the podcast or if you want to comment or contact me, just go to editingwriting.ca and everything you need is there. Thanks again, and we'll talk again soon.